You ready? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katri and I'm here today with my lovely husband, Josh. Hi. All right, so today we're doing something fun. So my husband, Joshua's birthday it's is me. in August. So we, we both, yeah, we both kind of like came up with a fun idea. Uh, yeah. Um, But we originally, I told him that he could pick my TBR for the month of August. And so we kind of rolled with that and we came up with a really fun way to do that. So Josh here has taken books from his shelves and my shelves. Total of 16 books. Yes. Um, and I'm going to be picking eight of those because I normally pick about eight every time, um, excluding my book club books, which he also picked one of my book club books for yeah, this dude. month <laughs> for yeah, my BFF um, book club because we were down a book and we were like, let's just have Josh pick it because it's his birthday month. Gonna so. Uh -huh. yeah, it's gonna be so what we have here is do you want to like pull up the first ones is he has wrapped 16 books and he's put little prompts on them so it's a blind date with your blind date with a book basically yep and we're gonna go through them and choose. figure out like yeah i'm gonna basically choose, choose whichever one is man. most intriguing to me so all right is this the first one these are this is the first pair so okay. we have Number one, one. And number 16. I'm going to show it again. Okay. So this is number 16. The reading on this one is 4.24 on Goodreads, right? Yep, what this you is the Goodreads. Published in 2013. This is a sci fi fairy tale retelling and a romance. I think I know this one. And then we have that number one, published in 1986. Wow, I actually read that back. <laughs> It is a fiction this mystery set in a small town with supernatural elements to it. You must choose okay. my love. So I have to choose. Oh my gosh. How did you I pick? Like, <laughs> just oh eats my a book. gosh. Their ratings are exactly the same. Oh wow. Yeah. So you can't do it off That's the rating. That's so funny. Well, I know which I one totally I want to read, that. but I also have no idea what this is. So I'm like really intrigued, but I want to read this one because I'm pretty sure I know what this one is. So if we're picking it, number no 16. I knew it. And it's private. The next book in the Lunar Chronicles. Yay. I'm so excited. I'm so interested about what that other one was though, because I have honestly no idea. So this is my first book for the month of August. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Next the pair. The next pair. You will have number two. Okay. You want to go to first? And then number 15 is so, a... Camera so they can see it better. It's a 4.02 rating. It's a classic. It's a dog story. It's a story about a dog. That's why they call it dog story. Um, survival is a, a huge element to this book. You're always wondering... Will the main characters survive? So, All right, I have inside. number two here. This is a 4.1 rating on Goodreads. It's fantasy, mm -hmm. will they, won't they, romance, and damsel in distress. I think I want to say I know what both of these are. And I think I'm gonna go with this one, fantasy. Damsel in distress, will they, won't they? I hope this is yes, it is what I thought it was. Yes, okay. I love that you get excited, anyways. So you're like, ah, oh. Brinsinger, Brisinger, Brisinger, okay, by Christopher Paulini. Paulini, I, you Paulini. didn't even let me get like try it that time, Sorry. okay? Like I was spaghetti. gonna say it right. Oh. Paulini, if you say so, this is the third book in the Er, the inheritance. inheritance inheritance cycle so aragon's the first book um and i've been slowly reading through these for joshua give it a flop so, check there this no, is a floppy a good flopper. flopper oh my gosh i love that <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna steal your book or anything but second pick <laughs> want to ruin i've been like opening them so that i don't ruin all the pretty props because i love how you did this <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> this is just me with the sharpie just 
I was first I, when I was first writing them down, I was like, I hope she likes these. <laughs> <laughs> so number three, uh four point oh nine star rating. It's uh historical fiction. It's a personal account of an actual historical event, obviously. Um, but it's centered around an armed conflict. Okay. And I have number 14. This is a 4.15. Yes, 4.15 star rating. Published in 2014. It's a nonfiction disaster and historical account. So. We must choose. I feel like I might know what both of these are. Maybe. But maybe not. I wonder if any of these will genuinely surprise you. I don't know because this one's so tiny it is small and you I already have really two big. chonkers too and i have two big. chonkers and this one looks a decent size mm -hmm. so i think i'm gonna go with the small one just to make sure i at least get one small one because <laughs> i'm crazy and i like to kill myself with books um apparently i, I way over the bit this one. Oh my gosh i've been drowning in how many books i've been trying to read oh okay you forgot what, you had this. What was <laughs> Pompeii? I did forget I had this. Um, this is so by Jim O'Connor. Uh, this is like a what is it? A who, what, where yeah, type of like little like just historical to teach you about historical stuff. I've been reading some of these um, kind of in preparation to like see what like if they were good first off and if I would want to use them along with a school curriculum when my kids get old enough. So. That is number three. I get this one. So, number 13. We have a, what is that? <laughs> 3.85 star rating, according to Goodreads. Um, it was published back in 2001. It's a mystery slash thriller in a European setting, but it's got a silly and light tone to it. Mm. All right, and I have number four. It's a 4.07. This is a published in 1905. It's a classic, a master of disguise, and intriguing. I feel like I know what this one is. I don't know what this one is. Oh gosh, that's hard. Cause like, if this is what I think it is, it might take me longer to read. And I'm like, I don't know. If it's what you think it is. If it's what I think it is. Could be something different. But I don't know what this is. It also has a higher... Mm, I'm going to go with this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with the classic. Let's see what classic this is. Yes, this is what I thought it was. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> the Scarlet Pimpernel? Pimpernel. Pimpernel by Baroness Orzi. Okay, this is one of my husband's classics. And you've read this one, right? Yes, it's actually really fun. And okay. it's actually really funny. Because honestly, this is a pretty big classic. Now that I'm thinking me. about it, a lot of the prompts that are on here fit on there too. Because it is kind of like a it's mystery also thriller set in, European set in Europe, Europe. And it's also got a silly tone to it. Because oh it's goodness. like. That's kind of funny. Yeah. I'm more interested to see what that is. But this is our <laughs> fourth out of. Yeah, our fourth out of eight books. Mm -hmm. There we go. The next pair. This is fun. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I'm positive. All right. So now you get this one. Okay. I get this one. So we got number five it is 3.88 stars on Goodreads published back in 2006 to science fiction with family feuding and light versus dark elements. All right, this is number 12. This is 3.9 star. It was published in 1605. It's a classic self-delusion questing. Questing. She's like, what on earth does that mean? <laughs> I don't know if I want to read any of these. I know what this is. What does that mean? <laughs> why, why would you give me... This will probably take me like three months to read. Oh, oh my gosh. Sure. And this, I also think this is the book that you just finished reading. And I, <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to read it. I don't want to read a Star Wars They book. all can't be easy. Oh, <laughs> this will take me three months if I start this. You don't I already know that. picked the. You don't know that. You're picking that one? This 
Oh, I was about to say. Right. This is um Don Don Kyoto. 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 How how do you say it? I don't know. You don't know how to say that name. I don't know, know what books in there. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I go with a Star Wars book I don't want to read or a classic that'll probably kill me. I'm gonna go with classic. Oh. She really doesn't like Star Wars. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like you Star Wars. Like Star I just Wars. don't want to read that one. You See, just, I told you. You're not ready to get into the books yet. So how do you say this? Don, Don Quixote. Quixote. Okay, I almost had it. Almost. Yeah, you're close. This thing is gigantic. This is over a thousand pages. Well, give it a flop check. You know, you might like it more after flopping it. It's not the floppiest. Mm. It's got a little flop, but this is worse than Count of Monte Cristo, and it took me two months to read that. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. Uh, Look, they can't all be Book number five. Us, okay? The legend. So, you had two thick boys. And now we and got now some you got two smaller ones. thin boys. Okay. So, number six uh, averaged about a... It's average right now on Goodreads, about 4.6 stars. Oh, it's actually a pretty high rating really for Goodreads. High. Yeah. Uh, published 1948. It's a nonfiction, theologically rich, and very emotionally oh. packed. All right, this is a 3.8 stars on Goodreads, published in 1898. Classic slash sci-fi apocalyptic apocalypse and aliens. Aliens. Okay. You like that one meme where he's we like, got aliens. aliens. This is the two. This is another classic, and I've already picked two classics. I think I'm going to go with this nonfiction right here. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, she's switching up. I was honestly expecting that one to get picked. Oh, I wanted to read this. You've known I wanted to read this. Okay, this is The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. Thank you. You're welcome. It's got a little bit of water damage on it, and I'm sorry. But... That's okay. It brings a little bit of a flop because of the water damage, so... Water damage brought the flop. <laughs> it brought the flop. Okay. So that is number, oh my gosh, I keep forgetting what six. number we're at. Yes, number six. Are you ready for this one? This one might break your heart. Oh gosh. It might, it might be hard for you. Did you put two books I really want to read this month up against each other? We'll see. That is not I nice. thrive on chaos. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> Number 10, published 2022, got about a 3.9 3. 3. 3. 9 rating on Goodreads. It's a romance with a long distance trope where the main character is rather bookish and introverted. Okay, this is a 4.39, so this one's rated a bit higher. Published in 1954, fantasy epic, big things, small packages, good versus evil. Here, do you want me to give you the other one so you can weigh them and feel them? And... Oh, big things, small packages. That's what makes you pick it? Because it's Fellowship. I want to read the <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring. I told you. I've been waiting and putting it off until your birthday month so I could start it. So Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.L. Token. This is the first book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'm very excited to read this. My husband has already stolen my copies and read them before I got they to them. Great. So I enjoyed them a lot. That's yeah. I've had these for over five years. Five years ago. It's time. It's so time. yeah, it is definitely time for me to read them. I'm Enough very excited. Um, Emma, Emmy, her channel. They just finished reading it for Game of Tones, and I have been like loving it, and it's made me even more excited to dive in. So I am excited. This is our book number seven. I have picked two chunky books. <laughs> That's what happens when you let me pick. I, I, I like the chunksters. The chunk. The chunk. <laughs> the chunk. Anyways, all right. You know what's going on in my head right now. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Number eight. Published in 1953 with a 4.39 star rating. It is based off of ancient legends, and it has a fantasy genre to it. it has a chosen one trope, very much knights and kingdoms, chivalry vibes. This is 4.26 rating, published 2021, nonfiction, political commentator, 
Conservative versus liberal values. Oh my gosh, did you pick Will Witt's book off? You don't know what's in there. I don't know what's in there. I, I want to read this one. I'm killing myself with all of these classics. You hear that, Will? You know, I already read, I already picked a nonfiction, and I read a nonfiction with my book club, so that's already more nonfiction than I normally read. King Arthur and His Knights of the Round Table by Roger Lancelin Green. This is also a beautiful copy. That's I got you this copy, book. didn't I? I think so. Have you actually. read this copy? Not that specific edition, but I but have yeah, read this. Yeah, this was one of your favorites from childhood, right? So Very formative for me during number my teenage eight. years. Whoa. This is my Look stack. Look boy. My chunkish, chunkish The stack. chunk. All right, we have... King Arthur and the Knights and the Knights of the Round Table. This is from Josh's shelf, shelf, and it is a classic. We have The Fellowship of the Ring from by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is a fantasy classic. It's kind of considered a classic now, isn't it? Yeah, at this yeah. point. Yeah. My Shelf. <laughs> Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer, a Christian nonfiction theology. Josh's Shelf. <laughs> Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Quixote. Uh, this is by Miguel de, Miguel de Cervantes. Cervantes. Oh, that's a T. Okay. <laughs> My Shelf, another classic. Um, the Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orzi. Another classic, Josh's Shelf. What Was Pompeii by Jim O'Connor, a nonfiction historical. My Shelf, Bryn Singer by Christopher Paolini. Josh's Shelf in Fantasy. And my shelf, Scarlet, The Lunar Chronicles, book two by Marissa Meyer. So we have She's so one, crazy. two, three, four. We have four from my shelf oh and my four gosh, from your we? shelf. Oh my gosh. Now look at that. It split right in two. That's so funny. I didn't, we didn't even plan that, obviously. <laughs> but you literally had 50-50 chances every time, so. Yeah. Okay, so... This is a great looking stack, though. Which one are you wanting to start out with? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So I also have. Oh, do you have that book? Which the book? Louis uh, for my BFF oh. book club. We are reading uh. a Louis L'Amour book, which he writes westerns. Correct. Yes. Yes, and so we are reading. Ah. Um, I perish. We are reading The Lonesome Gods by Louis Lamar. So this is also on my list. And then BRB. for my book club, Woman's Christian Nonfiction, It's Up Against Is God Just a Human Invention by Sean McDowell and Love Does by Bob Goff. Currently, Is God Just a Human Invention is winning. So it'll probably be this because it's leading by quite a bit. But so that'll be the 10 books. Probably I will put down in the description which one won, but probably this one. Yeah, so those are my 10 books. That is chunkier than I thought it was. Um, it reads. Trying to kill myself. West, this I will say this. Westerns, <laughs> Westerns read fast. They really do. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what I will start with. I mean, I know that like Scarlet, even though it looks kind of chunky, I can read that in like a day or two. Mm -hmm. Which Scarlet? <laughs> and then I'll probably <laughs> knock that off quickly too. All right, and then for any of you who are curious about what the other books are, just as curious as I am, Josh is going to run through them real quickly and tell us what I missed out on this month. So, <laughs> give me a second. Got to put these in like generally a decent order. All right. So, book number one. This was This Present Darkness by Frank Perez. <gasps> No! Oh man, I really wanted to read that one this month. You don't have to be sarcastic. It's okay. I'm not being sarcastic! <laughs> I literally, like, I forgot about that one because I knew you were going to, like, try to get me to read the next Aragon and Tolkien. Like, I was fully expecting those, but that was the other one I was fully expecting and wanting. Yeah, it's not but getting I also didn't. Just, like, I also did, don't know hardly anything about that book, so I guess it would make sense that I didn't, like, recognize it by no. then. And then number three... This would have been Gods and Generals by Jeff Shara. Ah, okay. So I was right then. I was right. I was like, I think that's a little bit too much with how, how much I'm already reading. <laughs> how dare you not want to put on more? No. She guessed this one. It was um, Betrayal 
from the Legacy of the Force series by Aaron Alston. I had read this and liked it pretty well. I definitely wanted to keep reading it, and I also kind of wanted to pass it to her to see what she would have thought of it. Hmm, but you wanted to have a discussion. Maybe I'll read time. it, yeah, but not... Okay. Not this month. That's okay. I'll feel it in this month. Um, Maybe in September. This bad boy would have been... Um, Nonfiction. Oh, yep, that yeah, was... Yeah, this um, one Will was... Lips, right? Oh, hang on. Um, How to Win... How to Win for Friends and Influence Enemies and, okay. by Will Witt. Will Witt. So if Will Witt happens to be watching this video, he knows that you chose <laughs> another book over his. Like that would ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then number 10 you might get crushed by this this was this authentically long? izzy by pepper basham oh okay and then yeah that would have been a really quick and easy read for me if i had picked that one but that was up against lord of the rings mm -hmm. i can't you know mm -hmm. i didn't make you it easy you shouldn't have done that i didn't want to make That's it easy not very for you. nice is this Brave, not Brave New World, War of Worlds by War of the Worlds, Wells. yes, by H.G. Okay. Wells. So, number 13, this one would have been The Sweet. Secret oh. of Chimneys by Agatha Christie. Okay, I was like, I that was kind of in the back of my mind. I was like, I guess he could have picked one of my mini Christie novels, and because I just don't, I don't know all of the premises to all of those, but... And this one, the dog story, it's White Fang, right? Yeah, it's White Fang. Okay, I thought Jacqueline. so, because I was like, I think this is the only dog story I have on my shelf right now. Yep. So, those are all the books that I missed out on. Honestly, I'm only kind of upset about two of them. But I wouldn't trade Table. what books I got instead of them for them, if that makes sense. So, yes, thank you so much for watching thank you josh for picking out all these books and i can't even hold this stack i'm trying to kill myself happy birthday to me she is trying to kill me now actually rather the books are trying to kill me they are very upset that they got chosen yes i hope you guys liked this little blind date with the book tbr game um i might actually just continue to do this <laughs> really yeah well, that's what I wanted. Yeah, I might do this. So I like this. It's unique. It's nice. And Blind Date with a Book was like my favorite thing growing up. So like, yeah. You know. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and your week. And we, or at least I, will see you next time in my next video. Bye.